Hello students, I am Mrs. Avantika Tiwari, working as Assistant Professor in Department of CSC at Vignan Institute of Information and Technology. In today's DBMS lecture, we will start Unit 4, that is Overview of Storage and Indexing. So this is the outline of the lecture. First, we will start with file organization, then indexing, moving on to the various types of indexing that we have, primary index, secondary index and clustered index. Then we will do some related numericals and then we will start hash based indexing and multi-level tree based indexing. So first we will discuss how database files are organized in the memory of the computer system. So in any computer system we have CPU, we have main memory and we have secondary memory. CPU is your processor which is the brain of the computer. So as CPU is the brain of the computer, whatever queries you will write will be handled by the CPU, the processor of the system. Then main memory is usually the memory that is having high speed of access but very limited capacity. So main memory is usually having high data processing speed but very small size and secondary memory is having high capacity but the data accessing speed is very less. So this is the reason why main memory and CPU directly communicate with each other while CPU never communicates with the secondary memory. Why CPU interacts with the main memory? Because speed of CPU is compatible with the speed of main memory. But CPU and secondary memory are not speed compatible. So that is the reason why whenever some data is required, first that data will be transferred from secondary memory to main memory and then that data will be accessed by the CPU. So let's discuss what happens when you create a database file in your computer. So suppose I create a database table with the name book and this table contains four columns, book number, name, author name and ISBN number. So whatever data you will store in the book table that will be directly mapped onto the hard disk. Now here we need to understand that the hard disk is divided into number of blocks. So all the tuples that are present in the database table book will be mapped onto the blocks of the hard disk. This is known as file organization. So the database files that you will create in any DBMS software that will be saved in a database file and file is nothing but a collection of records. So all those records will be stored on the various blocks of hard disk. So suppose we have book number, then we have name, then we have author name and we have ISBN. So all the records will be stored in the blocks in this manner. One by one all the records will be stored in the blocks of the hard disk. Now the mapping of all the database records onto the disk blocks can be done in different ways. One way is sequential file organization. So in sequential file organization all the records will be stored in sequence one by one in the disk blocks. Now that sequential file organization can be performed in two manners. One is ordered file organization and one is unordered. So if I say ordered file organization, that means based on any attribute present in the database file, the records of the database file will be ordered. Ordered means it will be sorted either in ascending order or in descending order. When I say unordered, that means the database records have been mapped onto the disk blocks in a random manner. They are not in any ascending order or descending order. They are simply stored onto the disk blocks. 
Another file organization technique is heap file organization technique in which wherever we get space in the hard disk, the records are directly stored onto the hard disk blocks. So these are the different ways in which the records of the file are stored in the blocks of the hard disk and they are known as file organization techniques. Now let's take an example of how the query will be executing. Suppose I write a query, select star from book where author is equal to Navathe. So if I write this query in order to get the details, all details from the table book where the author name is Navathe. So this query will be handled by the processor of the system. Now the processor will directly communicate with the main memory of the system. Now this query Now this query will be passed to the processor of the system. Now the processor of the system will look for the required record in the main memory. Required record means the record in which the author name is equal to Navathe. Now in the main memory we can store only limited data because as I said the size of the main memory is usually small but the processing speed is fast. So in return the main memory will search for the required data in the hard disk. So in the hard disk as we discussed the records will be kept in different blocks. So in order to get the desired record we will transfer one block to the main memory. Then the main memory will search that block. If the record is found it is a hit. If the record is not found it is a miss. In the case of miss the block will be transferred back and then the next block will be transferred to the main memory. Again that block will be searched for the required record and if the record is found it is a hit. If the record is not found it is a miss and again the block will be transferred back. Why we are transferring back the record? because we, we want some space in the main memory in order to store that block. So in order to create that space, we will transfer back that block in which the record is not available. And again we will transfer the next record. Again if the data is available in that block, we don't need to access the next record. So the time taken in order to transfer one block from secondary memory to main memory is known as input output cost. So whenever in any of the blocks the required data will be fetched, that data will be passed on to the processor and then you will get the result of your query. So this is how this setup works whenever you create a database file and whenever you execute any query. So here are some points to ponder. Typical database applications need only a small portion of the database at a time. Wherever a certain portion of the data is needed, it, it must be located on disk, copied to the main memory for processing and then rewritten to the disk if the data is changed. So all the read and write operations will be performed in this manner. Then the data stored on disk is organized as file of records. Each record is a collection of data values which we call as tuple or rows of the database table. Records should be stored on disk in a manner that makes it possible to locate them efficiently whenever they are needed. So every time our target should be to minimize the input output cost.